Hello everyone, this is Big Face from Big Face Robotics. I'm still working on the mobile robot. You'll remember I've got the nice little uh, controller built, ready to go. And uh, I'm going to be working on the, on the software for the robot for the wheel control. Um, I've got the encoders tucked away in there. You'll remember from a previous video, if you haven't watched that, uh, go back and, and have a look because I'll show you how to, how to build some incremental encoders. And uh, I'm going to be working on the software for the wheel control. Uh, at the moment I'm using both joysticks, uh, one for each wheel, and the control is just proportional to the, uh, to the joystick signal for each wheel. So you have to have pretty good thumb control to get this uh, moving in a straight line. And uh, generally, because of the resolution of the joysticks, uh, moving at slow speeds is, is tricky. So I took this outside for another little test run to remind myself um, how this drives and whilst good fun um, control is a bit tricky so I'm going to use the encoder signals and probably just one joystick to try and improve the control of the robot so um, let's get started so the first job was to write the PID controller for the wheels taking the encoder inputs uh, the pulses counted um, between samples as the input and the output of the PID loop was the uh, pulse width modulation to the wheels, uh, to the motor driver. Um, I used a PID library for the Arduino and then spent several hours staring at screens like this uh, to tune the PID controllers. So I tried various uh, gain settings and sampling frequencies and settled on a, a control that looked pretty decent and that's the trend that's on the screen at the moment. Um, this seemed to be controlling the wheels nicely, not too much overshoot and, uh, and a bit of a settling time. So um, so that was working well. So I added brake into the wheels as well. If the joystick's uh, in the middle, or more or less in the middle with a little dead band, then the wheels would, uh, would be braked by the L298 motor driver. So another addition to the code running on the robot that's pretty useful is a heartbeat, which is a, a counter that runs um, for every loop where there isn't uh, any data received. Um, after crashing the robot a couple of times in early testing I decided this was necessary so if uh, if it loses connection with the controller um, after that counter hits a certain uh, certain setting then the set points for the wheels will go to zero and the robot will stop safely um, hopefully before it collides with anything. So if you remember back to early testing of the robot with the skid steer type steering using the two joysticks it was quite hard to keep the robot in a straight line unless you put both sticks uh, full forward then it would go in more or less a straight line but anything other than that tricky to control so with the new controller in place I set it up so that uh, one joystick was doing um, forward and reverse and did a few tests to see if I could get it to go in a straight line and it did more or less it wasn't too bad it would veer off a little bit if it hit a bump um, or the rear caster swiveled but more or less a straight line with uh, with one joystick control it was uh, going so well. I've got the first casualty. Considering I've given this thing some abuse, it's not too bad, but I don't know if you can see that in there. I've got some serious play going on. So, time to investigate. Okay, nothing too major. A few loose um, uh, retaining screws onto the shaft there. This one has uh, had nearly fallen off. And uh, this one here was very loose. Uh, tighten them up. It was moments from failure anyway, because one of the motor wires came off. So uh, found that and uh, get that solder back on and uh, put everything back together for another test run. So the next job was to get the robot steering as well using just one joystick. I found a good resource online. I'll put a link in the description for the. Uh, the algorithm, the, the, the formulas to calculate the um, wheel speeds given the joystick inputs. Uh, did a bit of fine tuning of that and managed to get the robot uh, steering and moving forward with the one joystick. And it was working, working pretty well. So we took it out for a bit of a test drive and, uh, and had a bit of fun with it.
So I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. Um, it's great fun to drive. Uh, I've got the control working with one joystick, uh, which is what I wanted to achieve. The PID control of the wheels is is working as well. Um, I'm still having a bit of difficulty with uh, with control of the robot. Um, straight line is not too bad. The turning's okay, but I still think the robot's a little bit too quick. It's great for driving around and having a bit of fun, but actually as a robot platform. Um, I think it can go a bit slower, uh, a bit more torque to the wheels, uh, might be a good uh, good design change. So that's something I'm going to be looking at very soon. Um, I think when trying to drive down hills or on a, uneven ground, the fact you can back drive the wheels very easily and combine with the weight, weight of the robot um, tends to send it veering off course. The other consideration is the ground clearance, which I was hoping would be a bit, a bit higher. Certainly for driving off uh, off road on on grass and, and other surfaces, an extra ten or fifteen mil there would be perfect. And uh, and that's something I'm going to be looking at. So it's probably going to be a redesign of the gearboxes with something different. I've got some ideas. In fact, a little sneak preview. I'm going to try a worm drive. I'm not sure how well that's going to go. But that'll be the next video. Uh, gear these down a little bit um, and uh, and see how the robot performs. That'll also free up a bit of room inside because um, these gears won't be here. I can put the motor driver down there as well. So um, as always, thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing, and uh, and I'll be back soon.